Have you picked up the Alienware Aurora R7? And are you thinking if an upgrade is going to be necessary? And if you have these questions, then this video is for you. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Dale. And I'm Walt. And this is Live Streaming Tech. And if you want to learn to stream like a pro, make sure you click that subscribe button and turn that bell notification to on so you don't miss a single video. Not too long ago, we actually shared a couple of different videos about the Alienware Aurora R7. We did the full unboxing, which actually it's been well over a year now that I first purchased yeah. this. And then we also did the look inside video and you showed some of the little bells and whistles that are involved with the R7. And I asked you more recently, do I need to upgrade this? Because I, I kind of feel like how much I spent, I got a lot, but I almost feel like, do I need more? Because there was like a lot of extra slots and things yeah. like that. Yeah, well, actually, Dale, that's a great question. And that's going to depend on what you're doing with the PC. So, for instance, if you're just using it as a regular workstation to do Excel or PowerPoint and this and that, the answer is going to be ultimately no. Matter of fact, you probably bought too heavy of a PC <laughs> to do that kind. Where here, Dale likes to do a lot of live streaming and video editing. So, uh, Dale, explain what you do uh, during a typical heavy live stream and what you do on a lighter side. So uh, I typically am either streaming out to YouTube, onto Twitch, onto Facebook Live, and sometimes even aggregating out to those through Restream.io. I use Streamlabs OBS to live stream out that. And then of course, it's aggregating into Restream.io, and I'm typically keeping a window open of that so I can kind of make sure everything's looking on the up and up. And every now and then, I will use some resource hogs in things like Camtasia where I'm doing video editing live for people to watch and follow along and using something like graphic design software like GIMP and I keep that open or even something like Publisher Rocket which is like a self-publishing tool. So there's a lot of things going on all at the same time not to mention that even the mics that we're currently wearing they actually go through a phantom power source known as a Tascam US322 and I've got to turn on the mixer for that so it actually gets a nice balanced software. sound. Yeah, and that's more software. So that's what that's what we're going to have to look at, Dale, when it comes to upgrading for you. So for instance, for somebody else that is just streaming uh, lighter games or they're just doing IRL where they're running a camera at 720 or 1080p, then obviously they're going to be pretty much good to go with the R7 mm -hmm. as is, even, even the vanilla style R7. Because I do believe that you paid a little bit extra for more storage space. Yeah. Uh, you did buy uh, pass the extra RAM. You went with the regular standard 16 gig RAM yeah. in there. Um, and then uh, what else did you uh, upgrade on that? We did a deeper storage because I wanted to have... I didn't want to have to keep sending video to cloud storage. I wanted to just, if I was rendering and doing the videos, I wanted to kind of keep it here in house. That way it was always immediately available. That way if I had to go through and edit it later on, all I had to do was just grab it from my hard drive. So let's take a quick look. First off, let's go ahead and boot up your PC and we're gonna do a screenshot here on your usage here. And what we're gonna really look at is we're gonna look at your memory because obviously you have plenty of storage space. Your CPU is gonna be decent. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so right here we see that, you know, you're using a little bit above 30%. And that's probably because you have a lot of apps or uh, uh, software running in the background when you started your PC. We can always go in and kill those later and customize it to however you like. And matter of fact, we can probably even kill some of this alien bloatware that's in there. <laughs> All right, so now that we've looked at that, let's go ahead and we're gonna have you, Dale, we're gonna have you set up exactly how you'd be streaming when you're doing video editing. Okay, so now here we see that he's using a little bit more memory, but once again, he is still around that 50% threshold. So he has a lot of overhead here uh, when it comes to his live streams. It's gonna kind of wean and wane as he goes along with his live stream. The longer you go, the more likely you're going to slowly fill up that, especially if you have a lot of browsers over and especially Chrome. Chrome tends to eat up a lot of memory. So as far as upgrading your memory right now as is, 
um, it wouldn't hurt, but right now you're not quite to that step. You're getting there. You're really close. So I would say keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on your resource usage. And uh, for those of you at home, depending on your live streams, go ahead, set your live stream up and go ahead and open up your resource manager or there's even resource apps that are built into Windows 10. And you can look at exactly what you're using as far as CPU, as far as, far as uh, GPU, memory, and your uh, storage, obviously. You're going to know what your storage is using. So the thing is, is, let's look at Dale's. Let's go down the list, actually, what I just mentioned. So first thing, the CPU. Should Dale upgrade it? Obviously not. He has an i7, six core. It is ample. Uh, plenty of room there. Now true, it's not going to be the brand new 64 core thread ripper that they're getting ready to come out. But then again, right. that is some super insane overkill there. All right, so let's move on to the GPU. He's rocking out with the 1070. Nothing super special as far as graphics goes. But then again, he's not a big game streamer. So even if he were to stream games, What's the games you've been playing lately? I mainly like Lego games. Exactly. Yeah. So he's not going to be using a ton of that GPU resource. The next thing, which was his main concern, which was the memory. He has those two slots open, and boy, he was ready and willing to slam more memory in there. But my thing was, was, was look at your resource usage. My thing is, once you start creeping up into the 70, 75% range of your memory usage, opening up everything that you have open that you're gonna be using when you're live streaming or doing whatever you're doing with this uh, PC, then that is when it's gonna cue you in. To, don't wait for it to start uh, giving you alerts saying that you've ran out of memory, but just keep an eye on that. Once you get around that 70, 75%, that's usually when I go ahead and do my memory upgrade. And uh, he would move up to the 32 gig. As far as storage, he has two terabytes, and you even have an external hard drive. Uh, so, and he does put a lot of stuff on and the I cloud. And I haven't even scratched uh, it. Yeah. All. <laughs> so, once again, uh, as a, if he was a game streamer now, there on the other hand, he would have to watch and pay attention to that. Yeah. Because nowadays, uh, the, these games are launching, you know, with like 68 gigs. Matter of fact, the other day I downloaded one that was like 80 gigs. Uh, so, I mean, it doesn't take long to fill a hard drive up uh, when you're a game streamer. Yeah, and this should be noted too that I have hundreds of videos stored on my hard drive, and lots those, of them. And those do take up a lot of room. They do, they do actually. And the, and the more uh, the the, uh, the more intensive it is when you do the edits and stuff and mm -hmm. higher resolution, uh, higher frames, that's going to tend to burn up a yeah. lot more hard drive. Like the uh, the Camtasia files, uh, what we're recording on right now is the Streamlabs OBS. This goes over to Camtasia, and then I start to layer those out. So you've watched here on live streaming tech. They're very layered and such, so, and I'm gonna say this, never had any issues so far over the last year, year and a half that I've had the Aurora R7. So other than going through and maybe killing some of the uh, startups uh, that you have going on on yeah. the uh, Alienware R7, uh, I would say you're still good to go and there's no upgrading. Um, if you have any questions on uh, whether you should upgrade your R7, please leave them down below. Tell us what you think, whether you're a gamer, whether you're a game streamer. Uh, what do you do on your Alienware Aurora R7? Say that fast three times. <laughs> and also, while we're at it, if you've not checked out the unboxing, video you're going to want to go ahead and take a look at this video right down below us we will see you over there all right just got in my shipment from dell oh let me tell you about the problems with dell and ordering alienware it's the aurora